Physio Youth, it is my pleasure to meet you all once again, although it is not physical meeting, but at least visually. How have you been all these three weeks at home? I think you must have missed your friends. I personally miss going out because I'm a very extrovert person. Ask me to stay home 24 hours is like a really tortures to me. But it is good that at this point of time when we are at home, we spend time with families, get to know each other better and also spend great time bonding together. This morning, without further delays, this weekend is the Palm Weekends. This is the weekends where marked the Jesus Triumphant Entry. You can find it in the Four Gospels where recorded how Jesus entered to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And we will learn about the scripture verse and the lessons that we're going to talk about this week. If without further delay, let's spend some time together worshipping the Lord, give our hearts to Him, open up ourselves as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today that we can gather today in this place. Lord, as we come together into your presence, may your presence will take joy in our worship and our praises to you. As we come to you, O oh Father, we pray that you will check our hearts. You will create in us a clean heart, a heart that will long for you, a heart that will thirst for you, a heart that will desire for more of you in our lives. As we worship you together, lift out our voice to you. May you take pride and joy of our voices and our praises that will enthrone you above as our King of Kings and as our Lord of Lords. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The lesson for today's message that I'm going to talk to you about is a heart of worship. A heart of worship. What is worship to each of you? I think many of you would have told me if you were around that worship is singing. It is very true that worship is singing. But worship is more than just singing. To some of the people, when worship equals to singing, which means if I don't like singing, then I will not worship because worship is singing. But worship is more than singing. In this Palm weekends, as we learn about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, I would like to bring this message of hard worship where people gather together to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In the New Testament Greek words of worship, which just simply means falling down, bowing down. That is the meaning of worship. And in older English, the word worship is making out from the word worth-ship. The worth means value, something of value to you, something that of important to you. That's why, that's what worship is all about. For example, if you go to a place where it's so beautiful, when you look at that place, even without you knowing it, your heart and your voice will come out. Wow, look at that. Or you saw something that is really cute, like a pet that really admire and so adorable. You will automatically voice out, wow, look at that, so cute. This is something that you find worth in it. And your whole being, your physical being, you can't help it. But it will exclaim out, like an exclamation mark, wow. That's the effect that actually we should give to God when we come into God's presence. It's because God is deserving of all our worship. How awesome our God it is. When we come into the presence of God, when we look at God, and we, when we worship Him by lifting our hands and our hearts, you might not good at singing. You might not even enjoy singing. But it's not just about singing. It's about your hearts coming into God's presence, recognize who He is, what He has done for you, that brought about the amazing and wonderful time of worship together. Let's look into the scriptures that we are going to look at this morning that is found in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 11. Matthew 21, verse 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to birth patch on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with a coat by her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says of anything to you, says that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on the donkey and on the coat, and bowl of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus has instructed them. He brought the donkey and the coat and placed the cloths on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloths on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the heavens. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. What a wonderful scripture verse that we have just read on the Palm weekends where Jesus entered into Jerusalem triumphantly. And people, actually gathered together, the large crowd gathered together to worship Him. 
In this instance of Jesus Triumph, actually, I really want to brought out the topic of worship. As you can see in the whole passage from verse 1 to 11, what is worship? What is worship? As far as I have mentioned earlier, worship is something that come out of our hearts at exclamations that we find worth in God. God is so amazing. So worship itself is not just limited to singing, but this also the way the expressions from yourself that is making out the time of worship and most importantly is must from your heart. Based on the verse that we have read just now, there are a few elements that I want to pick up about worship. First, in regards to worship, what is God's expectations on each one of us? What is His expectation on us? The first focus that I want you to look at is when God desires worship from us, it's a need, not a want. God put it very clear when He sent Jesus, when Jesus sent out His disciple to get the donkey, he tell the disciple, to tell the owners that he needs it, not he wants it. Worship is not a want. It's not, oh, I want to do it. But it's the need because of the worthiness of our King. Lord of Lord, our God, how awesome it is. It is a need. So if we, it is a need, then how can we come before the Lord and worship? That is where we can find in this scripture verse recorded in this triumphant entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. When God desires us a need to worship Him, He does not require us to do some things that out of what we do not have. Because God knows that we are not God. Worship is about giving God what we already have on hands. Where do I come to talk about this? Okay, first, we look at the two things that God required the triumphant, actually the two materials that God was, uh, Jesus was asking for. The first one is the donkey, okay? The donkey is some, belongs to someone. And that is some, already had. The donkey that is already there, and when Jesus asked for it, the owner said, yes, take it, for the Lord needs it, and you can have it. And the other ones that people gathered together when Jesus right on the donkey entered into Jerusalem was a branch just of the palm trees that cut off. They can find it anywhere. It's not something that they had to go somewhere to buy it to get it. They saw the branches and they got it, cut it, made efforts to wave it and put on the, uh, the, the, the hands and wave it. That's the expressions of how worship comes about. It is not getting some things that you do not have. Oh, let's get the moon for God. Let's get the sun for God. Because those are amazing things that can speak of how how you know God desire us, need our worships from some things that we already have. The donkey that is already made ready and prepared for the Lord's use. And the branches that is already on the road and people cut it and use it to glorify God. And some people who do not cut the branches, maybe they don't have the equipment to do that. What they do is they take up their cloak and put it, lay it down on the floor to welcome Jesus during this triumphal worship. So worship is not about getting something so difficult early in the morning when you come to church, when you prepare yourself to worship the Lord. Oh, I must do this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No. Worship is something that God needs from you something you already have in hand. For instance, your voice. You don't have to borrow someone's voice. You don't have to use someone's voice to do it. But you can just do it. It might not be the best of tune, but when it is come up from the bottom of your heart, your voice becomes the most angelic praises, worship that God will enjoy. Your hands, clapping of it, raising of it, waving of it, it's a form that where you can come before the presence of God and give it as a ways of worship. And when you indeed worship and you realize how amazing and how awesome God is, by kneeling down on your knees, humbling yourself before the Lord with what you have, your knees, your two knees, become the most powerful equipments that you can use to glorify God. And the tears that flow down from you, the thoughts that you have focusing on God, 
the eyes that you have closing and wondering on the amazing and the love that God has showered on you. All this is worship. So the first point that I'm talking about worship is simply a need. And this need that God has for each one of us requires on what we already have. That is our hearts of worships that come into Him by offering all of us our whole being to God. Worship is not just about what we can give to God, but what we already have, we present it to God and allowing God to take it for His glory. And when God did that, He sees into our hearts and He is pleased. And our lives is blessed as we do all that we have, come before the presence of God. We once again come back to the original hearts of worship, where our hearts are joined with God. And we will meet God face to face, just as Moses go up to the mountain and meet God face to face. And if He come up, He will never be the same. Okay? So worship is a need. But this need is provided by God on whatever that you already have. Let's move on to point number two. What is worship? We know it's a need and God already provides what we had so that we can worship Him freely. The second thing that is very important, it is recorded about this donkeys that Jesus sent His disciples out to get it. It is the scripture verse that I have read. It does not say it in Matthew, but if you refer back to Mark chapter 11 verse 2, it's the same gospel uh, that has uh, dropped down about the triumphal entry of Jesus. In Mark chapter 11 verse 2, when Jesus instructs his uh, disciples to go out to get this donkey for his use to enter into Jerusalem, he tells his disciples, this donkey that I'm going to get is a donkey that has not been written before by anyone. It is a donkey that has not been written before by anyone. Why is it important? Why must Jesus get a donkey that nobody has written on it, but he will be the one who writes on it? Can't he just take any of the donkeys? Why must be ones that not written before? This second point brings us back to the very important parts of worship. That is our only love for God. In the Old Testament, God says very clearly to His people, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul, with all your strength, with all that you have. Love Him. When this donkey that has not been written by anyone else, it's just telling us of our undivided love for God. When we come into God's presence to worship Him, besides giving what we have, besides knowing that there's a need to, what is very important is our undivided love for God. A donkey has not been written by anyone else, has not been used by anyone else, but solely for the usage of God. It is only when we come to God, undivided, fully devoted to Him, for His use, for He to come and fill our hearts with all that He is, we will come up differently from before. Many of us have really lost it. We talk by raising our hands, by the tears, but everything we do in the worship, that is enough. No, worship is more than that. Worship is more than just the outward expressions of ourselves to God. But it's talking about the internal hearts of us. When you come to God in worship, when you raise up your hands, are your hearts there for God? Are you focused purely on God? Or you are still worried on the things that is bothering you? Yes, you want to things that is captivating you, things that has more hold on you. No, let's come before God when He writes on us. When He comes upon us, we are purely, solely for Him. Because only that way, when God has fully filled us with His Spirit, with His love, 
during the presence of his time we worship with him. When we get out of his presence, we carry along his presence with us. We can allow ourselves to be fully blessed to our people that is around us. Many a time we say, I spend so much time worshiping the Lord. I spend so much time doing what I can, raising my hands, my voice, and my eyes, everything to God. But why when I leave God's presence, I feel defeated? Do you ever experience that yourself before you? You felt like it was fine when I'm in church. It was fine when I read the Word of God. It was fine when I pray. It is good. In fact, it is wonderful. It was perfect. I feel wholesome. I feel everything was on the top of the world. But the minute when I close the Bible, the minute when I close the prayer in Jesus' name, the minute when I leave the church, the minute when I leave my devotional time, I feel defeated like a deflated balloon once again. Why? That's because when you come into God's presence, you are not the donkey that has not been written by anyone else. You have allowed your burdens to come into you. You have allowed yourself to be torn and weighed by the things around you. And you have not allowed God to take full control of His authority in you, of His Lordship over you. You have put a space aside for yourself to keep your own secrets and you thought that by doing that you can help yourself. No. Come to the Lord fully. Allow Him to change you, to mold you. And don't allow yourself to defeat by thinking that with your own strength you can do it. Surrender it all out to God, just like what the New Testament Greek words have said about worship. Totally falling down on your four feet. Worship the Lord from your heart. The songs that were sent earlier, we thank uh, uh, Sharon for leading us this time in the time of worship. The heart of worship, coming back to God with a heart of worship. It's all about Jesus, it's all about Him. It's not about us. The problem during the worship that now I want to talk about, besides knowing needs of worship, we can worship God with what God's already given us by giving it back, offering it back to Him, and to give Him undivided love, undivided attentions, undivided hearts. That itself will bring a wholesome of worship to your experience when you come to God in worship. So it's not just about singing, it's not just about clapping hands, it's not just about raising your hands, close your eyes, your tears come out. It's about your heart. Is it healthy when you come to the Lord? If it's not, allow God to feel yourself. The mistakes that we always make during the time of worship is this. In this message of the triumphant entries that we have read earlier, do you think the people who come before Jesus to welcome Him into Jerusalem sincerely worship Him by cutting the branches, putting down the cloth, all this? What do you think? Honestly, I think they come with the most sincerity, believing that they are worshipping the King of King and the Lord of God. That's why in verse Nine, the clouds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. I think the people really exclaimed out of their desires to worship Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of Lords, by shouting out Hosanna. Hosanna in this phrase just means save now. Save now. The people of Israel are in the desperations, looking up to Jesus as their Savior, as the Messiah, will come to save them from the Roman Empire. Did they worship Jesus? Yes, they did. But what mistake do they make? Then you might ask, is it possible to worship God with mistake? 
Yes, I think as human beings, as a single nature, as a singers, we do mistakes at all times, at all places. It doesn't limit just when we are in the world. When we are in the church, we do make mistakes, even during the time of worship. The people call out, save, 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 save. Indeed, Jesus are able to save them. Definitely, God is able to save each one of us. But the problem, the mistake that most of us worshippers, believers make is this. We limit our God to a box. We limit God into a square box that we can imagine Him to be. To the people who shout out, Hosanna, Son of David, save us, save us now. They have limit Jesus to be the King of this earth. By rescue them from the Roman Empire. But Jesus was more than just the king of this earth. Jesus was called not just to save the people of Israel, but the whole world. If Jesus has succumbed and followed and agreed with the worship that has been done by the people on the road waving branches, the clock, by saying that, wow, that's a wonderful experience I can have. If Jesus has stopped at the triumphant entry and do not move on to next week, which is the Good Friday and the Easter week where he died on the cross and resurrected on the third day, we all will not have this service now. We all will not have celebrations of what the Lord has done. You see, we, the worshippers, we tend to limit God. We tend to use our own wisdom, what we know about God, to put it into the boxes that we think this is who God is. And when we come into God's presence, we worship this, this box. God in the box. That's the mistake most of the worshippers, most of the believers have made. That is also including me sometimes. At many occasions, with my own struggles, my own problems, I have put God into a small box. Thinking that is what God will do. Thinking that that is what God can do. Thinking that that is what I can get and I can receive from God. Let's don't limit God. Let's allow God to be who He is. When we come to God in worship, when we enter into God's presence, when we're waving our branches, when we put down our clock, when we kneel down before God, may we don't limit and put God into boxes and saying that, God, this is who you are. Save me. This is who you are. At this COVID-19 situation, save me. No, God is God. God is above what we can imagine, what we can think of. If we would have just allowed God to be God, when we enter into presence, we are liberated straight away. There will be no need for us to think of solutions, what to do, how to do, because God, He is the God with solutions. He is the God who knows what to do. And all that we need is come into His presence with genuine heart to say, Hosanna in the highest, save me because I know you are God. Finish. Full stop. Do not say, save me to be the king of COVID-19, to raise above God's already above all this. He is above everything that we can imagine or think of. Don't fall into the trap of what the people are doing to set God into a box to save them, to save them from the Roman Empire. God has the whole world in His hands. Today as you come back to the heart of worship, to trust in God, let's follow Jesus' example of worship. He is not swayed by what happened around Him. At times he struggles, that's why he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane with sweat like a tear of blood. He struggles with things, but yet he set 
his face on God. He set his heart on the cross. Although it's hard for him, but he knows the God who has sent him is not in the box. The God who has sent him to this earth to save the people is not limited by human being or by any things that he can imagine on. With that assurance, he ride on the donkeys. With that assurance, he entered into Jerusalem to set his resolutions to die to self so that God can be God and resurrect him at the due time. Today, let's allow God to be God as we enter into the time of worship, as we come into God's presence. Now or the next time, let's do not skip the worship part. Let's do not miss the worship part. It is of utmost importance of Christian life. It is not just part of the service time. It is the wholesomeness of our believer lives. Many believers, many Christians, many worshippers who come to the church always think that worship is just a prelude. Something to pass time in order for us to move into the Word of God. And what is important is the message is the, is the Word of God and we need to pay attention to. That is the wrong mindset and wrong ideas about worship. Worship itself is the message. Worship itself is where God's presence you will be fine with. Worship itself is where you actually enter into God's presence and be with Him. How can you miss it? How can you don't do it? How can you skip it? How can you jump just into the Word of God without really come to God in His presence to worship Him and set your hearts to God? In closing, once again, I really encourage you to sing the songs of heart worship again as we sing together. May we really give our hearts back to God. It is all about Jesus. It's all about God. It has nothing to do with us.
as we have worshipped just now together, and I pray that from today onwards, worship will be the very parts of your life as believers and as worshippers to experience God and His presence in you. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this message. Once again, reminded us again the importance of worship, the importance to come before your presence to worship. I pray for each one of us as we learn to worship you, as we learn to sit at your throne, inquire ourselves and raise our voice, raise our hands, raise our hearts, Without tears, we are knees bound. Whatever that we are doing, may you take joy in our worship time spent. We pray that as we come before you, we will draw our strength from you and you alone. We love you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. See you again next time. God bless you and have a wonderful time. You can use the playlist that we have uh, uh, given you earlier to use that as time of worship that you can have. Bye, God bless you.